This video will talk about the concept of partial fractions. We'll review some algebra and then we'll set up the method um, before doing examples in other videos. Let's review some algebra about polynomials. The highest exponent on x is the degree of the polynomial. So we need to be able to distinguish between the different types of degrees. So when your polynomial is to the first degree, that's called a linear polynomial. When your polynomial has a degree 2, that's a quadratic polynomial. And we can go further, right? A third degree would be a cubic, and fourth degree would be a quartic. We're going to find out that we can focus all our attention just on linear polynomials and quadratic polynomials. What we want to do with these, the quadratic that is, is to know whether or not they can be factored over the reals. And so um, the, the name of what, what that is, is to say that the polynomial is reducible. Okay, we have two quadratics. One is reducible and the other is not. The, the first one here can be factored. It can be factored as 2x and x. And then we need to come up with two numbers that multiply to give you a negative 12. And when put in the right way, give you a 5. And so we're going to use a 4 and a 3. Because that will give you an 8x and a 3x. They will subtract to give you a 5. If you want it to be a negative 5, you're going to need that 8 to be negative. And so it factors. Uh, there's a way to tell whether it factors just by looking at the coefficients of a uh, x squared x and the constant term. Um, the second polynomial is not factorable. The second quadratic there is not factorable. And when you're not factorable, that's called the opposite, right? Being irreducible. And we need to know whether you're reducible or irreducible for your quadratics. The fundamental theorem of algebra says the following. No matter what degree a polynomial is, as long as the degree is more than zero, then and if you have all real coefficients, you'll be guaranteed that you can write this as a product of linear factors and or irreducible quadratic factors. You see, because if you are a reducible quadratic, then that's just linear, two linears multiplied by each other. So every polynomial of degree n equal, you know, n greater than or equal to zero um, that has real coefficients, you'll be guaranteed that you can um, factor it to be linear or irreducible quadratic. Now the linears might appear more than once um, and we'll see what to do with that. The real question becomes how do you know? How do you know whether the quadratic polynomial is reducible or irreducible? It turns out you can just focus on the coefficients and that can tell you. If you have ax squared plus bx plus c, the formula for the quadratic formula has b squared minus 4ac underneath the square root. The value of that will tell you whether you're reducible or not. When b squared minus 4ac is anything greater than or equal to 0, the quadratic is reducible. But when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, the quadratic is irreducible because you'll have a negative number underneath that square root. Let's take a, a deeper dive into these and look at um, four different quadratic polynomials and discuss further the reducible or irreducibility. So we have first one is x squared plus 3x minus 18 and the value of b squared minus 4ac in this one is 81. When b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square then it turns out that the polynomial should be factored nicely like the way we had done before. Um, there should be a nice you know set two sets of parentheses you break apart the x factor nicely means like use all real numbers and be able to um, fill out the uh, the two sets of parentheses um, after considering the possibilities of and being able to factor it. This one factors, right? It factors as x plus the 6 and x minus 3. And we know it does when we get b squared minus 4ac to be a perfect square. Okay. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, like in the second example here, x squared minus 4x plus 4, then that turns out to be the case when you'll have a double root, meaning that, you know, the, the whole plus or minus the square root of that is going to be plus or minus the square root of zero, so you only have one real root, and it's a double root. And so that's a possibility as well. This would be factored as x minus 2 quantity squared. 
And then the other option for reducible is if b squared minus 4ac is something that's positive, but not necessarily a, a perfect square. So x squared plus 2x minus 10, you can't factor that nicely over the reals. When I say nicely, I mean using integer or rational values. Um, you have to end up using irrational because we have b squared minus 4ac is a 44 in this question, and that gives, has a square root of 11 in it, and so that's an irrational, but still real, still factorable over the reals. You just have to use um, irrational roots, and when we're doing partial fraction decomposition, we tend to not um, end up uh, having to worry about this particular situation, example three. Okay, so those are the three um, different possibilities for reducible. And then when you're irreducible, it's the fact that d squared minus 4ac is less than 0. In this case, x squared minus 4x plus 13 has b squared minus 4ac equal to negative 36. And so then you'll have a, a plus or minus 6i. You'll have imaginary roots. The polynomial doesn't factor over the reals. Um, it factors over the imaginary. You have imaginary roots. Okay, so being able to factor is critical in order to uh, even begin the method of partial fraction decomposition. Let's look at the next slide where we start to talk more about partial fraction decomposition and we get away from this algebra. So what we're dealing with is rational functions, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And we focus our attention on the denominator and we want to be able to factor the denominator and know how it decomposes. The goal here is to be able to take that fraction, that simple fraction, and break it into, um, it's kind of like unsimplified, um, to break this rational function into um, a product of linear factors and quadratic factors. Basically, um, we're going to use algebra to, to help us do that decomposition, to start with one fraction and find out how it decomposes as many fractions and then from there these these many separate fractions are supposed to be simpler and easy to integrate okay let me give you an example of those so we'll have um, like 1 over x minus 4 or 1 over x minus 4 quantity squared or 1 over x squared plus 4 these are all fractions that are simple to integrate okay so your goal is to start with a rational function, decompose it into fractions like this, and then integrate each of these separate simpler fractions. Okay, let's look at integrating these guys. 1 over x minus 4. If it was 1 over x, we just have natural log. So this is some shifted type of function that looks a lot like 1 over x. It's been shifted 4 units. Uh, you just do a u sub, let u be equal to x minus 4, du is just dx, so then it'll look like 1 over u du, which integrates to be the natural log of the absolute value of u. And so this then will be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 4. Nice and simple integral. The next one, what about if that was to a power? Same kind of concept, we'd be able to let u be equal to x minus 4, du will be dx, and you'll be looking at 1 over u squared. Now remember, that's not a natural log. 1 over u squared integrates as u to the negative 2. So to be u to the negative 1 over negative 1, which simplifies to be negative 1 over u. That is uh, u to the negative 1 on top of negative 1 simplifies to be negative 1 over u. Okay, and so then back in the terms of x, it's going to be negative 1 over x minus 4. Uh, in general, if you have 1 over the quantity of x plus a squared, it's just going to be negative 1 over x plus a. Just make sure that x cannot be equal to negative a, and you'll be good. So you can put that formula in your cheat sheet and be able to integrate that without really thinking um, too much about it. And then finally, we have 1 over x squared plus 4. Different than the others, a little more complicated actually to work through the integral, but still just as doable with the formula. Let me walk you through it. It's something you should see one time, but really the way you do this is you think about it as like, what if the four was actually a one? Then it, you'd be looking at arctan's derivative. So you're gonna have to just venture through a, some algebra to turn the four into a one and look at the ramifications of that. And then yeah, we'll end up with an arctan. And so the first thing is to take the four out, factor it out. 
Now the other term, x squared, doesn't have a 4, so when you factor out the 4, it'll have a 4 underneath it. And then you could take that all the way outside, and then recast x squared over 4 to be the quantity of x over 2 squared. We're trying to look like arctan derivative, and so we want to have 1 over something squared plus 1, so we can integrate that and have arctan of that. Well, it's going to be x over 2. And so we have this integral, and we do a u sub. You let u be x over 2. This time du is a half of dx, and so double du will take the place of dx, and you'll be looking at 1 fourth times the integral of 2 over u squared plus 1, and that's 2 times the arctan of u. But you already got the 1 fourth out there, so it cancels to be a half of the arctan of u. So it's something you do once, but then, you know, we want to be able just to have a formula for it. And so this guy's going to be 1 half the arctan of x over 2. Remember, u is x over 2. In general, if you have 1 over x squared plus a squared, you'll have 1 over a, the arctan of x over a. So this is the end game to have nice simple integrals, but the issue is the algebra to get from the starting rational function into these simpler integrals. And so let's discuss the method of how to um, make your way through that algebra, the, the decomposition. First off is your degree of your denominator needs to be higher than the degree of your numerator. Okay. Um, if, if it is, you can start the partial fraction decomposition method. Uh, if it's not, then you can't start and you have to actually long divide the numerator um, by the denominator. So this is if the degree is equal or if the degree on top is more, the numerator's degree is more. In both those cases, you'll have to long divide to start. Uh, we'll see an example of that in another video. Okay, but once you do have the degree of the denominator higher than the degree of the numerator, then you can start the process, and the process is built off of focusing your attention on Q. You start with Q, the denominator, and you factor it. You see how it factors. So your ability to factor is going to be critical. And then you have to identify the different types of factors. There are three different types of factors. Okay, and so this Q of X can decompose into three different types. Fundamental theorem of algebra says it needs to be either a linear or an irreducible quadratic we're going to go further and say a linear like raised to the first power it could also be a linear raised to a higher power still fits and then finally it could be an irreducible quadratic those are the three different options okay and here's how you deal with each of those three if you have a linear factor raised to the first power or a bunch of them like for instance 5x over that x minus 4 times 2x plus 3, then it needs to decompose where each of the factors in the denominator end up as uh, getting their own fractions, and in the numerator, you just have the constants a and b. It'll be a, um, an algebra game for you to work backwards and try to figure out what kind of values of a and b allow me to be able to decompose in this manner with the end goal in mind that you'll be able to integrate both of those without any trouble. And so, decompose each fraction, um, each one gets a fraction, and they get constants above. So that's f f um, format number one of how your denominator can, could, have, uh, de could decompose. Format number two is when you have a linear, but it's raised to a power. So for instance, maybe it'll have something like x minus 3 quantity cubed in factoring the denominator. So that gets handled totally different than above. So for that, what needs to happen is that you need to have a fraction for each power on that linear term from one all the way up to the, um, the power of the linear term. So we need a cubic, we need a quadratic, we need, we need a cubic, we need it cubed, we need it squared, and we need it to the first power. One fraction for each, and just constants A, B, or C up top. Um, and then this the second guy x plus 5 follows from above that you get your own fraction for that um, with some other constants above and so power a linear raised to a power requires multiple terms up to that power a linear to the first power just one term the third type is of course the irreducible quadratic so you might have a linear term down there, x minus 7, but then here's this irreducible quadratic, x squared plus 2x plus 10. 
So then and only then are you in the one situation where the numerator is not just a constant. It's then and only then that the numerator is ax plus b, some linear factor the, lin the numerator is. Okay, if you're later on down the line, bx plus c. Okay, so irreducible quadratic has a numerator that's not a constant. Everybody else has a numerator that's a constant. This linear term, just like in Roman numeral one, has a numerator that's a constant. It's when you have an irreducible quadratic that you're going to have a numerator that's not constant. It's linear. It's ax plus b or bx plus c. Okay, so correctly diagnose how q of x decomposes and then It'll be a basically a chase down game. Use algebra to find the constants. Okay, and I'll show you how um, I can. Uh, you can do that with a, somewhat of a shortcut um, in subsequent videos. We're going to do a bunch of examples, uh, maybe one video um, per example. But that right there basically is the concept of partial fraction decomposition. Remembering a bunch of algebra about how polynomials factor, and remembering the goal, uh, knowing the goal, and how to get to these simpler fractions that are that you can integrate by um, decomposing to one of these three layers. There could be another layer if we if we had more time we could do a irreducible quadratic that's raised to a power but for the interest of time we'll just have this is the end of it and so now let's look at some examples in, in other videos. Thank you.